I have here the new AirDirect from Tether Tools. This device plugs straight into the camera and it sends wirelessly the RAWs or JPEGs to your other devices. So whether that be computer or mobile or tablet. Now I've run this through a number of different tests to see how well it works and how much it can improve my workflow. So I've been using Tether Tools cables for several years. I tether most of my work, making sure that I'm getting the shots that I need in a compositing environment and that they're going to work and everything's going to come together when I go to Photoshop it. I generally use Capture One for tethering, uh, so I'll be demonstrating with that, but you can use this AirDirect device with any tethering software. Uh, you can use it with Lightroom, you can use it with Smart Shooter from Tether Tools, and uh, yeah, it works with all of those. So I'll be demonstrating it with Capture One. Now the first thing is that uh, this device just sits on your hot shoe, now you can get separate attachments uh, if you're using the hot shoe for a flash, uh, for a, a remote trigger, uh, you can get other attachments. Then you want to, uh, it comes with a number of these cables to fit different cameras. So they come in the box with all the different types of cables. Now my Nikon Z is a USB-C attachment. So we just plug that into the side. Now the awesome thing about this Air Direct is that it makes it look like it is plugged directly into your computer. So you can directly tether. You're not using, you're not doing it in two steps. You're not sending it to a hot folder and then it's coming up. It's actually directly looking like it's plugged in. Now it sends the raw files to the device. Now that is huge. The Case Air worked well with JPEGs. Um, but for this to send the raw files, you would wonder how fast can it actually do that and is it going to be too slow compared to using a cable. So that's one of the things that I'm going to show you and test. Now the first thing is you need to decide whether you're sending it to a computer or you're sending it to a mobile device. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to a computer and I'm going to send it to the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, which is an all-in-one computer. So on the side of the device here, you have a switch and it says mobile or ADU. We're going to switch that to ADU and of course turn the power on. And what will happen is it will create a Wi-Fi network. Now one of the downsides with this is that you can't use the internet on that Wi-Fi network at the same time because it's a direct Wi-Fi network to the device. But there are some workarounds for that. So on the Mobile Studio Pro, one way that out on the field I can use the internet at the same time as using this AirDirect is that I would connect my phone up as a hotspot via USB. So connecting it up via USB means that the internet is coming from the phone and the device is talking via Wi-Fi to Capture One. So on my home computer or my studio computer, I actually have that connected up via Ethernet. So my internet is coming from the Ethernet direct cable and my Wi-Fi then can talk to the camera. So I'll show you that next, but first of all, I want to show you on here. Now, the first thing that you need to make sure of is that the ADU helper is in fact connected. Now it won't be, it needs to run. So it needs to run in the background. So you need to make sure that it, that is going, but you also need to make sure that your Wi-Fi is connected to the right network. So at the moment, I'm on Story Art Studio. So while you can run via your Wi-Fi network, I prefer to switch it directly over to AirDirect and you can use the password that comes with it or you can change that password in the settings. So I'm connecting up to the AirDirect directly so that my, my files can come straight into Capture One. So now it says I'm connected to my AirDirect 
and that ADU must be, remain running and connected while using the AirDirect device. One of the things you'll notice when it's connected is that it shows up on the computer as removable storage. So it's literally looking for this camera and it shows up as though it's plugged in, which is amazing. Uh, so make sure that that's happening. If it's not happening, also make sure that you're using a clear card. So a formatted card before you start. You'll want to then start up your capture software, uh, the software that you're going to use to tether with. So I am going to use Capture One. So you can use any tethering software for this to work, uh, but Capture One works really, really well. So then if I take a photo right now, as soon as I've launched Capture One, this will then come up in Capture One. The first photo may take a little longer to show up, but I've found that shooting on the Z, on the Z7 at 40 megapixels, so really big, full quality raw files, are taking around three seconds to come through to the computer, which is really, really actually quite quick, considering it's working on Wi-Fi. Uh, if you are using a camera that's 100 megapixels and you're you know, shooting continually, you might want to consider still using a cable for that. But for most cases, uh, if you're not shooting constantly, sending through a barrage of photos all at once, uh, you will find that this device works really well and it will bring through those raw files. You can set it to send through just the JPEGs if you want, uh, if you want them to obviously show up a lot quicker. Um, but for me, I love the fact that I can send my raw files direct, that I can start working on a composite straight away so that as soon as I've got that shot, I can test it out in Photoshop and that test doesn't become a throwaway. It actually becomes my working file that I can continue on with once the client's gone. So I'm going to take a few photos now just of random things in my studio. And uh, we're going to see how quickly these start to come through. Take a photo of the camera again here. And just uh, watching the shots come through. So you can see they're, they're coming through around three seconds for each one. Uh, and then you can go straight in and start editing those as you need to. So using the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro out on the field, using my phone to tether via USB and using the AirDirect to send those files through wirelessly is going to solve a lot of headaches for me with cables and people tripping over them. It's never happened, but it is possible. Sometimes I nearly trip over them. So now I can work free from those wires and I can work portably with both of these devices. But what about in my studio? This desktop computer is an iMac Pro connected to an ASO monitor. And I use this when I'm shooting in the studio. I would normally tether with the tether tools cable. And I've got that there for those such times. And in the studio environment, it's usually okay to, to have a cable and tether. But to be able to walk around again freehand, not be able, not have tripping hazards in the studio. Fantastic for that. So how easy is it for me to connect up to this computer? So first of all, I've got it connected via Ethernet to the internet. So my Wi-Fi is, it's free to use the AirDirect. So I am going to click on my Wi-Fi, turn Wi-Fi on, and it is already connected to the AirDirect as the preferred device. It's seen it, it's connected to it, it is already there. So you can see these images are coming up straight away. Again, it's a similar time delay of a few seconds for each one and that is because these are really big raw files. I wanted to test it with a camera that sends through large raw files so you get a really clear picture of the timing and how long it takes for them to come through. Now if you used uh, lower megapixels or JPEGs they would be much faster. So this Excellent, it works really well, it's very, very quick to set up, no problems connecting to it, and no problems with using the internet at the same time because I'm connected via ethernet. So that's just one thing to consider 
If you are using Wi-Fi for your internet, you may need to use some other form of internet on your computer, whether it be USB connected, Bluetooth, or ethernet, so that you can use internet at the same time as using the AirDirect if necessary. What about on a device? Now I have tested this on both my phone, which is Android, and also on an iPad. Don't have the iPad here today because my daughter now has to take it for grade three. So she's got it at school today, but it worked basically the same on the iPad as it did on the phone. So I'm gonna go through the setup for that. Now, the first thing that you need to do is there is a switch on the side and ADU is for when you're using the computer and mobile is for when you're using the mobile. So it works a little bit different on a mobile setup. There is software and it is called Air Remote. So the Air Remote software is what you need to download to get this to work. Now I've just switched it over to mobile. I need to make sure that I am connected to the same Wi-Fi. So it's the same process as it is on the computer. Following that, you open up the Air Remote software. Then you'll then see the Nikon or whichever camera that you've got connected showing up. You can take a photo through there. You can show live view. So you can actually see what the camera is seeing through the phone or through the device. And you can take a photo using the device. Uh, so it works really well, it was fast, you can get software for a lot of the cameras and run similar things on Wi-Fi, but I did find that the Air Direct made it work quite seamlessly. So you can control the camera from this Air Remote and then you can take the photo and it will show up in your album. One of the things to keep in mind when you're shooting to your phone or to your device is in having it download the RAWs to your device, it can take up a lot of space and it can take quite a lot of time for those RAWs to download. So to make sure that it's set up so that it's not actually downloading those really large RAWs, you can change your settings. You can set it to ignore RAW downloads. So it might then just download the JPEGs. You can also set it so it's not auto downloading. Now, the reason that you do that is because you can still see all of the images that are on the camera on the Air Remote software. So when you take a photo like this, You'll be able to view it and see what you've taken and you can download it using the download button if you choose to. So the new Air Direct will work on most cameras. It works on the Z perfectly. If you're not sure about whether your camera meets the specs, just check the Tether Tools website for that. But I hope that it's given you a really great overview of how you can use this new uh, system and how it can help with your workflow. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, there's always lots of new videos coming up on the channel and I'd love to have you part of them. So thank you so much for watching.